Beastie Boys crashed into the mainstream in the mid-80s rapping about the new style and yelling you gotta fight for your right to party, their brash hedonism striking a chord with hip-hop fans and suburban metalheads alike. This loud, obnoxious blend of hard rock and rap, showcased on their debut licensed to, wound up having a lasting impact, but the trio of Adam Yauch, Adam Horowitz and Mike Diamond were young thunks and restless artists. They soon abandoned pounding, aggressive rap rock for the dense sampledelic vistas of Paul's Boutique, their 1989 collaboration with the Dust Brothers. Paul's Boutique stalled the trio's commercial momentum but it became an album revered by hip-hop aficionados, pointing the way to the genre-bending self-referential pop culture of 90s pop. However, here are the facts about the Beastie Boys. They, they've always hated what their biggest song became. There's no denying it, even people who have no idea what the Beastie Boys have done no fight for your right, the Beasties hate it. Mike Diamond explained to Far Out Magazine that, we might have reinforced certain values of some people in our audience when our own values were actually totally different. There were tons of guys singing along. Oblivious to the fact that it was a total goof on them, irony is often missed. That irony was hard to see, it was after all, their first release and there was little to measure it against aside from the actions of the Beasties themselves. In turn led to the group's public image, which in all fairness they leaned into pretty hard. The song Diamond Has Shared, was written in about five minutes and scribbled on napkins at the Palladium. The idea was that they wanted to show that they had, in fact been working, and it just so happened to fit in with their big plan for making a name for themselves as they toured with Madonna. Diamond told The Independent, Our big idea was we should be as rude and as awful as possible on stage, we'd be memorable. Becoming who they claimed to hate. The surviving Beastie Boys have made it clear that they're sort of backpedaling when it comes to some of their more questionable lyrics. During the Beastie Boys story documentary, Adam Horowitz recited some of the lyrics to girls, which includes girls to do the dishes girls, to clean up my room girls, to do the laundry. Horowitz didn't think so, at least not anymore. He explained that it was supposed to be this stupid and ironic joke, but understandably, it wasn't that funny. He continued, we morphed from making fun of party bros to actually becoming those dudes. In a career review from The Guardian, they note that it was with the addition of Rick Rubin as DJ and producer that their over-the-top, frat boy personalities became just as important to their image as their music. Mike Diamond has spoken about how they were changed by what had started out as a joke. The Beastie Boys' Change of Heart Anyone who's familiar with the Beastie Boys knows that they're widely condemned for the homophobic and misogynistic content of their earliest stuff. Slate says that others can learn from their apology and the overhaul of their image, and let's face it they had a lot to overhaul. In 1999, Adam Horowitz penned an apology letter, and it wasn't just about lyrics or the original name of their licensed to ill album. According to interviews and transcripts in the archives of The Village Voice, they were pretty outspoken about their homophobic views. In 1987, the New Music Exchange outright asked them, You hate homosexuals? Horowitz's knee-jerk reaction was, I really do, I shouldn't have said that. Yauk stepped in to try to explain, We do not need to go into that, what Adam's talking about, I'll give you this, he definitely hates gay people, but the reason for that is that in this neighborhood, the who hang around here aren't like just gay people normal gay people all the sickos, hey kid, I'll give you five bucks if you. Adam Yauch's death. When the Beastie Boys took the stage in Tennessee on June 12, 2009, they didn't know it was going to be their last performance. But it was, says Rolling Stone it was also less than three years later that they would be reporting that founding member Adam Yauch had died at the age of 47. The same year as their final performance, Yauch had been diagnosed with cancer after the discovery of a tumor in his salivary gland. Less than a month after his death, Rolling Stone talked to Adam Horowitz about the fondest memories they shared, the biggest disagreements, and how they had all handled growing up together and the changes that went along with it. Yauch had for years not only been open about his own spiritualism and connections with Tibetan Buddhism, but he had also been an outspoken activist in the fight to free Tibet. According to Horowitz, who saw him shortly before his passing, he was comforted by his beliefs. I don't believe Adam was afraid, Horowitz said. Bummed out but I can't think when I ever saw him afraid. We got jumped in Brooklyn one time, so we've been afraid in that sense, but he hadn't been afraid in a long time. That gives me peace. 